Yes, guys, let's try again. I'm so sorry. I apologize. How about now? Yeah, now it's good. Cool. Yeah, so, you know, I said that I'm so excited to meet you all, guys, and thank you very much for your time dedicated uh, to our webinar. And that will be a great experience, so you will learn some information about facial recognition and uh, access control systems. So let us start. And once again, I welcome you uh, to the webinar dedicated to improving the reliability of access control systems and the face recognition feature as one of its tools. So today we'll get acquainted with the new functionality of EOCortex video management software that allows to complete a deep integration with the face recognition system. And uh, during our webinar, uh, we'll review the core of this integration. So the way it interacts with access control systems and improves its reliability. So we will learn what kind of installations require a high security level and why it is cheaper to implement the face recognition system than any other secondary authentication system. So, yeah, you hear my voice, right? Yeah, I see that some messages in the chat related to uh, the uh, to the sound. So all is fine, right? You hear me. Ah, okay, good, good. Yeah, so just let me briefly introduce myself then. Uh, my name is Paul Zemsky, and I'm the head of the sales department for Italy and Germany. And also, I'm responsible for, a Vietnam, for the Vietnamese and for the Hong Kong markets. And my colleague, Ilya Denisov, will be in the chat to answer all of your technical questions. And at the end of the webinar, we would like to uh, uh, we'll like to, you to fill a form in which you can give us the information regarding the uh, top ACS manufacturers with uh, whose products you will require the integration to be performed. And we will choose the most popular vendor, and our developers will carry out deep integration. And uh, so I'm sure that many of you have already worked uh, with facial recognition of your cortex and even used this module to organize an access control system. So it's time to learn something new. And uh, since September, the face recognition module has undergone significant improvements in both performance and accuracy. And face recognition is currently widely used in access control systems. So the share of face recognition in biometric systems is, in, is as high as 50% in various countries. And the annual double-digit growth of the market will result in the global facial recognition market reaching $5 billion in the next year. Yeah, doesn't sound good? Yeah, I think so. So although a number of European countries prohibit the use of facial recognition under the GDPR law, for example, Face recognition in access control systems is still of a great current interest. So we will start with the fact that in today's world, the access control systems can use completely different biometric data, from conventional access cards to retinal scans. And depending on the type of the system, there are different levels of error probability. And the most common access control systems use ID cards. Um, most systems use the card system because of its low cost. However, you know, the cards can be copied and borrowed from another person. And in this case, everything depends on the type of premises. If it's a must to avoid infiltration by outsiders, the access card system won't be able to cope with this task, you know. And there's another more reliable uh, and more expensive type of an ACS. So the fingerprint-based access. It would seem that every person has a unique fingerprint, and uh, yes, the system practically doesn't make mistakes. But as with face recognition, there can also be statistical failures when the system takes one person for another. You know, yeah, it's a common, common issue. And when it comes to face recognition, as an access control tool, we need to take into account that accuracy is directly related to such physical characteristics as a camera angle, luminosity, etc. And yes, the face recognition is popular. After all, th this is the most convenient met method for users and face cannot be transferred or changed. Doors open without any intimidation, and, uh, but it can also be wrong, you know. And let's see uh, what kind of errors the system could make. 
The first error occurs when the system takes one person for another. This may happen because their biometric data are similar or because the recognition conditions are not ideal. And if we're talking about face recognition, for example, the darkness may, uh, may make the system take one person for another. Or a person may have wet hands, so fingerprints biometric doesn't work properly. So there are measures to avoid these errors, but any manufacturer will give you the exact instructions. But as you know, during real life operations by employees, the appropriate measures are rarely observed. Yeah, that's that's a kind of a usual situation. And the second type of error uh, happens when the system cannot recognize a person, uh, and because of that, he or she cannot get access to the premises. You know, and this error uh, is also related to incorrect operating conditions of biometric systems. And despite the errors, biometric systems work better than humans. It's a sound auxiliary tool for security services. And um, the accuracy of biometric systems, including face recognition, is 99.9%. In face recognition, this number refers to the recognition algorithm, but apart from the algorithm, face recognition is also influenced by many external factors, which we will discuss later by the end of the webinar. And now I uh, would like to showcase the functioning of the Eocortex facial recognition system. So let me share the screen. Just hold on a second, sirs. We would like to check the plain functionality of Eocortex complete, Eocortex facial recognition complete module. Just hold on. All right. Okay, so here's the uh, client, uh, client application, Eocortex client. And now I will ask my colleague, uh, Vlad is the uh, International Department Sales Manager. And uh, just for your information, uh, he's, uh, this is just for checking if his face will be recognized uh, in less than one second. So, uh, Vlad, could you please appear uh, on the screen? That's awesome. You know, in less than like uh, 0 0.1 seconds, uh, the, face, the face is recognized. Could you do it again, please? It is recognized automatically, absolutely. Let us check the report. So here's the face of Vlad. Uh, on the left side, you see the recognized face, and on the right side, you see the face that was uploaded to the system in order to be recognized. So it works like as fast as 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 it can. So uh, it says that uh, the gender is men and the age is 27. That is 100% correct, and the accuracy is 98%. So it works 100% perfect. So let me uh, let me proceed with the presentation. And just for your information, uh, please stay on air. Uh, we will showcase and uh, we'll co uh, showcase some. Uh, features uh, of facial recognition completes when the face is recognized even it, if it's covered by mask or uh, if a person is using a different hats or some glasses or uh, yeah diff different uh, you know uh, also hard hat you know so uh, just stay on air and uh, you'll see something different and you'll see how uh, uh, so we'll perform the crash test by the way yeah, yes, simply say it. So crush test for eocortex facial recognition. <laughs> All right. So uh, so the just we'll ask you to share your feedback uh, after you, uh, after the webinar because it's very important to get the feedback from you because you know many of the functions uh, were designed uh, in regards to your feedback and uh, it was based on a feedback so it's very important to give some uh, give us some thoughts on uh, how eocortex functions and how do you perform uh, with eocortex so could you please stay on air by the end of the webinar 
So uh, what factors determine the accuracy of a face recognition module? So the first factor is the size and quality of the face recognition database. Then lighting uh, in the frame with the face. Third, the quality of the video stream from the camera. The higher the clarity of the frame, the easier it is for the system to find matches. Last but not least, the camera position. Uh, we will now look at these factors in more detail. So the quality of image is critical for face recognition. So the better the quality, the easier and more accurate will the algorithm work. So the less chance for false positives. On this slide, you can see how different the photos are. So the two photos on the left have no chance to be recognized. Therefore, to ensure that the module works accurately at your customer's premises, we have certain requirements that you must comply with when selecting the equipment and installing it. For example, the image resolution should not be lower than two megapixels. The second critical factor is the quality of the illumination. So a camera will not be able to recognize a face in the dark, no matter what the quality of the picture is preset. You should also understand that if a shadow appears on a person's face, you can see it in the picture, and the quality of the image changes. Uh, the system simply won't be able to recognize this person, and the illumination should be uniform and constant. It's very important. Also, uh, the next thing is camera installations. Uh, so our technical documentation describes the angle at which you need to install the camera so that the module works without any problems. It's necessary to maintain certain angles of deviation of the camera axis from the face of a person, and there should be no greater angles of deviation than those specified by the developers of face recognition module. So in order for the face recognition, recognition module to work as accurately as possible, the requirements shown on the picture image must be met. Very important. And you know, you may wonder why face recognition, for example, on a smartphone works perfectly without meeting any technical requirements for illumination, image quality, etc. If you using facial recognition on a smartphone, for example, uh, in an ATM, we are talking about comparison with just one face. And if you consider the identification tasks of the access control systems, the comparison is made with all the persons in the database. Accordingly, with, uh, when comparing two faces, the probability of error is virtually absent. And the larger the database of persons, the higher the probability of error, especially in the case of failure to comply with the requirements for the installations of the module. And as a result, uh, we get two different modes of operation of the system. A person's face can be used to identify him or her and thus make a decision on whether or not to allow this person to enter the premises. Alternatively, the facial recognition module can be used for verification of a person's um, as an additional secondary identification confirming factor. Uh, a face can be used as the only factor to be used for denying or granting the access to the premises. And if the cost of infiltration is not critical and the database is not huge, it means that the entry of an unauthorized person into the facility will not jeopardize safety and security. And you know, a typical case would be uh, to provide access to an office using face recognition or to a large enterprise where only a small group of people who have a face recognition based access. So on this slide, uh, you can see the most common problems that appear when working with biometric systems. Uh, if the level of security should be very high and it's imperative to prevent all the errors of the ACS, the face recognition must be used as a control factor. It means that the decision to gain access is not made on the basis of card reading or face recognition. The access is only granted when these two factors coincide. So uh, let's take a simple example of that, all right? Uh, there is a factory with ACS. Employees enter using their access cards. Perhaps with those cards, their working hours are calculated. 
And these cards are given to colleagues, relatives, or someone else who need to gain access, you know. And uh, one solution to this problem is to switch to another authentication system, a higher class card or a fingerprint system. So let's see what your clients need to do make the transition. First, collect cards from all people and issue new ones. Then replace the card readers, load the necessary information and uh, on the new cards and get rid of the old ones. And this replacement of infrastructure is complicated from the organizational and financial point of view, you know? I think you agree with me. And let's turn to authentication case right now. So what should we do in this case? Install the cameras uh, at the entrance and import the face recognition into the Eocortex software, and that's it. The system works, so you don't need, uh, you don't even need to rephotograph your employees. A person approaching the entrance with a card will be recognized, and the system will know whether to allow him or her to pass or not. It's quite simple and quite quite fast. And if the face um, doesn't ma uh, doesn't match the card, the system won't let the person through. Not considering any heavily, uh, heavily guarded premises, a common example would be the gym, like regular gym, you know. Uh, there, people discreetly give their cards to friends and relatives. But if a person comes with another person's card, his face won't be recognized. So he or she won't be able to gain access. Quite simple. So uh, how does the two-factor authentication work? So if you think that you need to make deep changes uh, into, in, in the settings of the two systems, you guys are mistaken. It all works like this, like uh, on this scheme. So there's a database of individuals from the access control systems, and this database is sent to EOCortex. Uh, REST API allows you to import the database into Eocortex or vice versa to export it and also set up the interaction between them. For example, um, your access control system has a database with names and photos. And when a person appears in the frame, the face recognition module compares the person with the database and sends the access control system a response, uh, whether the person is recognized or not. And if another factors such as a card uh, also coincides, a person gains access. The main advantage is the fact that you don't need to create two databases. Your clients can use the information that already exists. Quite, quite simple. And thus, uh, we have the following modes of operation of the face recognition in the access control systems. So the simple identification. Uh, when the decision about the entrance is made on the basis of the face. Uh, it's a great way to organize the office control systems, for example. And the second thing is the strict authentic uh, authentication. So uh, when a person can only pass through if the two characteristics coincide. That is, the person's face and the card of the fingerprint uh, are identical with those stored in the database. If any of these parameters do not correspond, the person uh, is not allowed to pass. So yeah, quite, quite, quite simple also. So and um, the third thing is the soft authentication. If, for example, the person is not recognized, the person will have access in any case, but the guard will be notified of this event. So it depends on which system to choose. It depends on your choice. And uh, similarly. Um, Eocortex can work with any third-party systems. It can transmit, receive, and respond to events. So as you know, thanks to the video analytic modules, Eocortex detects different events from line crossings to the absence of a hard hat on the head of a person. And on the basis of these events, third-party systems can make decisions, for example, to turn on an alarm, to uh, send a frame from a video camera, uh, to a labor safety department or whatever, you know, we have different different type uh, types of uh, automatization and events, uh, so you can combine them all, and it all depends on your clients' tasks and tasks and problems. So uh, to make such integration available, so we use the SDK REST API and Envive protocols. They are open, so you can do integration yourself if necessary, all right? And uh, 
So today we have reviewed the pros and cons of different access control systems and we have studied the information on how to use facial recognition technology to increase the reliability of the system and to prevent unauthorized access. And uh, now we'd like to showcase, as I said before, we'd like to showcase how uh, the system that is based on EOCortex facial recognition completes works when a face is covered. Just hold on a second, that'll be great experience. All right, Vlad, are you ready? All right, just hold on a second. Okay. All right, please, Vlad, go ahead. Okay, here's Vlad, and he's wearing a hard hat, and you see that the face was detected in less than one second. No problem for eocortex complete. Yeah, you're ready, Vlad. Go ahead. Okay, once again, Vlad is wearing a hat. No problem. No issues with recognition. Let us do it again. Let us try a more complicated case. That is a crush test, you know. Everything can be happen right now. Okay, Vlad is wearing a mask. Yeah, could you do it again? Because you know there is a gap uh, between recognitions and it takes like five seconds, uh, five seconds to be recognized. Could you do it again, please? Yeah, now it's good. Now it's good. So there is a gap between recognitions, you know. So it, it take it takes time. It takes time for the next recognition, and uh, this is the setting. So you you can set it up uh, on the uh, configurator. All right. Okie dokie. Less than one second. This is a real crash test, you know. We're not afraid of anything if people cover faces. Oh, that's good. That's good. 96% of accuracy. That's a great result. And that, that'll be the most complicated case for facial recognition. Hold on a second. Face is recognized with the accuracy of 99% and Vlad is wearing the mask and the hat. That is awesome. Yeah, I think that you're quite excited about the performance of your Cortex. <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, go back to the presentation then. All right. So um, I will uh, now launch this survey and ask you to leave your feedback. So also, if you have a project that requires two-factor authentication technology, let us know so this information will help us to identify the demand and prepare the most beneficial offer for your customers. And if you're ready to offer two-factor authentication right now, we will supply you with the old technical and marketing materials required. So. Uh, just contact us, uh, contact our sales department, call to contact your Cortex, and we'll get back to you with the ready-made solution for your access control and for your two-factor authentication systems. And just hold on a second. I will, uh, I will transfer our survey to the main screen. Oh, Giovanni, thank you very much for your feedback. Yeah, so uh, Giovanni tested face recognition and it works great. Yeah, thank you very much for your feedback. That's awesome. That's very, very important for us to receive your honest feedback. Yeah, 